Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. We are in Taipei for Computex 2019, and although the trade show doesn't kick off till tomorrow, we've still got some pretty exciting news for you guys today as AMD held their keynote ahead of the show. And that's actually a first for AMD. NVIDIA's got their keynote later today, and we'll find out what that super teaser is all about. In fact, you might actually know by the time this video goes live, depending on how long editing, processing, all that sort of stuff takes. Anyway, AMD's keynote was live streamed on their channel, so anybody could watch it, but if you missed it or you didn't want to watch an hour long keynote, then hopefully we can summarize the good bits for you and share some of our thoughts. Before that though, a quick word about our sponsors. Firstly, a big thank you to MSI for making it possible for Tim and myself to attend Computex 2019. Please check out their latest AMD X570 motherboards made for gamers and creators via the link in the video description. Also, a thank you to Corsair for their support. Please check all their exciting products out via the link in the video description. So getting right into it, the stuff we care about and hopefully you guys do as well, AMD announced the new Radeon RX 5000 series and it's based on the new Radeon DNA architecture or RDNA for short. Uh, this is very much like what they did with the Zen based CPUs which were designed from scratch. So AMD is doing the same thing with RDNA for GPUs. This is a new architecture. It's designed exclusively for gaming. So GCN will still remain for compute workloads, but RDNA will lead the charge for AMD when it comes to gaming products. Lisa claims an incredible 1.25 performance per clock increase and a one and a half times performance per watt improvement over the GCN fifth gen architecture. So this is really gonna help AMD significantly in their battle with Nvidia. They also demoed the RX 5700 head to head with the RTX 2070 in Strange Brigade and claimed a 10% performance increase. Though we know this is an AMD sponsored title. So overall we're expecting RTX 2070 like performance. The good news is we'll know exactly what the RX 5700 is all about as Navi GPUs will become available in July and we can expect much more info shortly on June 10th at E3, including pricing. AMD then moved on to talk about desktop CPUs. Lisa opened up saying AMD wasn't satisfied with their first and second gen Ryzen processors. She went on to say that they were hoping for a 7 to 8% IPC improvement with Zen 2, but was amazed when the engineers pulled out a 15% IPC improvement over the first iteration of Zen. That's an insane IPC increase and it will absolutely put Zen 2 on par or ahead of Intel's latest generation CPUs. So the first CPU they unveiled was the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, an eight core 16 thread CPU clocked at 3.6 gigahertz for the base and 4.4 gigahertz for the boost. So those are very similar clock speeds to the 2700X, but there are a few crucial improvements. The cache has been upgraded massively. Here we see a doubling from Zen's 16 megabyte level three cache to a whopping 32 megabyte cache for Zen 2. Then we see the TDP drop down from 105 watts to just 65 watts. These improvements made for a 15% increase in Cinebench R20 score over the 2700X. AMD also showed the 3700X beating the Core i7 9700K by almost 30% in Cinebench R20, and that's an important comparison given that the 3600X is set to cost just $330 US. So for the same launch price as the 2700X, you're getting a 40% lower TDP part with around a 15% improvement in performance. Then of course, it's also much cheaper than the Core i7 9700K, which has a $374 US MSRP and generally retails for a little over $400 US. Then moving on, AMD announced a slightly higher end eight core part, the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X, and this one comes in at $400 US. The clock speeds see a small increase to 3.9 gigahertz for the base and 4.5 gigahertz for the boost. Not quite the five gigahertz clock speeds everyone was hyped for, but given what we've seen so far, I doubt too many of you will be disappointed. The 3800X is positioned as an upgrade option for 2700X owners, and while it doesn't seem like a particularly impressive product next to the much cheaper 3700X, we don't yet know what the extra TDP headroom does for technologies such as XFR. We're still yet to learn anything about XFR or Precision Boost for these parts, so you might have to wait for reviews to get answers there. Then to cap all the Zen 2 news off, AMD announced their first mainstream 12 core 24 thread part, the Ryzen 9 3900X. This CPU operates at a base frequency of 3.8 gigahertz with a boost frequency of 4.6 gigahertz and it packs a grand total of 70 megabytes of cache. 
This is still a 105 watt TDP part and the price has been set at $500 US. There will obviously be a 16 core 32 AM4 processor. I don't think anyone actually doubted that, but we weren't expecting it to come at the initial launch. And that certainly seems to be the case here. Perhaps AMD will drop that one on us next year. But yeah, we're just guessing at this point, but there's certainly the possibility for a 16 core part. This means at least for now, the Ryzen 9 3900X is the flagship AM4 part and it will use two chiplets in a six plus six configuration. But because it is an AM4 processor, there are just 24 PCIe lanes in total, though they are now PCI Express 4.0 lanes. AMD did run a demo comparing the 3900X to the Core i9 9920X, so Intel's $1,200 high-end desktop processor versus AMD's upcoming $500 mainstream Zen 2 part. AMD won that comparison in Cinebench R20 by a 6% margin, so that was an impressive demonstration. I should also note that they're comparing a 165-watt Intel CPU to a 105-watt AMD CPU. After the keynote, AMD also discussed some Ryzen 5 models, the 3600X and the 3600. Both are 6-core 12-threaded CPUs. The 3600 features a 95-watt TDP and operates at a base frequency of 3.8GHz with a boost of 4.4GHz, while the 3700 has a 65-watt TDP and runs at a base of 3.6GHz with a boost of 4.2GHz. Both feature a 32MB L3 cache. The 3700X costs $250 and the 3600 just $200. These are going to be pretty amazing value parts, and they'll no doubt be the most popular options for desktop users. The Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 parts that were officially announced in the live stream, they'll be hitting shelves on July 7th. So roughly six weeks from now, you will be able to buy one of these new Zen 2 processors, and perhaps more crucially, check out independent reviews. Wrapping this up, there's still a lot of information that we haven't touched on yet, either because we haven't, well, we haven't got concrete information on that sort of stuff yet, or we're under NDA. We have signed a few NDAs for certain things. One thing that I haven't discussed yet that we don't have any seriously concrete information on, but it seems like that's a thing based on uh, the information we've got from certain motherboard vendors, but it seems like DDR4 3200 will be the new official memory support for Zen 2 processors. So... Not a huge improvement over Zen Plus's 2933 support, but it should mean that getting memory to work at faster speeds than what we're currently able to on Ryzen processors uh, will be possible. So that's obviously a good thing. Um, presumably AMD demoed the Zen 2 processors with DDR4-3200 based on what we're hearing. So it, it'll be exciting to see what they can do with even faster memory. Anyway, I'm personally just really pleased with what we've been shown here. I was a little concerned, but yeah, really excited, really pleased with what we were shown. The Navi demonstration looked really promising, and I like the direction that AMD is taking here with the new Radeon RX 5000 series. Of course, the Zen 2 stuff, that was amazing. We were always pretty sure that was going to be amazing. It was more of a concern of what we'd actually be shown. It sounded like for a bit there that it might be a bit of a, a chipset launch with just more teasers of Zen 2, but no, we got specs, we got prices of the higher end parts, and then we heard about the Ryzen 5 parts behind the scenes. So that's awesome stuff. And I'm really excited now to hit the showroom floor tomorrow and check out those X570 motherboards and see what else we can learn about the Zen 2 processors. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed our summary of the AMD live stream, the keynote. And please stay tuned for more product announcements throughout the week because Tim and myself will be covering those. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. And I'll see you again next time.